What's going on, everybody? It's good to see you all. Uh, today is our our New Year metric model meeting at a new time. So, Yuhui, thanks for staying yeah. up really late or getting up really early. I'm not sure <laughs> which one it is for you at the moment, but <laughs> I think it's staying up late would be my guess. So, uh, it's good to have all of you here. Today's question, if you play a daily game at all. So, all right. Connections, Wordle, Daily Mini Crossword. Yep, it's all the NY, it's New York Times. Do you play Spelling Bee? Is that for me? Yeah. For me? No, I don't pay. So no, no, you don't have to pay for that. Oh, you don't? I thought you did. Not Spelling Bee. You get one a day. Yeah, I will now. And there's called Letterboxed, which is also another really good one. I think I tried that. I think I feel like that one was very hard. Kind of hurt my brain a little bit. Is that where you have to like connect the... Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that really broke my brain. So All right. <laughs> I don't know. It's a little much for me, but I'll, I'll keep trying. <laughs> when you feel, when you're feeling up to it. All right. Could somebody drop the minutes in the chat for Daniel? I, sure. A couple things here. So, I all right. Somebody will beat me to it. But, yep. Somebody beat me to yeah, it. He's collecting energy from an ant forest. Yeah, I was kind of curious as to what yours would be as well. So <laughs> in China. You're muted, I think, Yuhui, or I don't yeah. hear you. I don't hear you, Yuhui. Your your audio is um choppy. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. That's okay. You can tell us about the ant forest when you're when that gets fixed. So um i do what's the game here that a lot of people play um farm something it's like where you tend to a farm and little creatures anyway i think that's what facebook used to be entirely about was tending to your farm at the very beginning uh all right well let's see so obviously a lot of you were uh in china for the open oiler summit I think it's probably worth spending a little bit of time. Daniel and I were, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you, you too. Spending a little bit of time uh, talking about it and just kind of what came of that summit and maybe what, you know, next steps are for folks. So, war's open. Well, I think uh, Yahui was a fantastic host. And uh, Daniel and I uh, really learned a great deal about how the open oiler community is working and we're actually i was pretty impressed with how well organized they are and how thoughtful uh, they're being with regards to metrics daniel i don't know if you want to follow that oh uh yeah so uh, tons of thanks for to yehui and julia and all the team there so uh, that was uh impressive um the uh kudos of course to sean that did a great job the presentation um and i think we had a good understanding of why metrics matter to open users specifically um and the, the need for to understand sustainability and health um and the discussions that we have for christmas we can say um were on the line of what if we are able to have this common business case uh, between chaos and open Euler then this could be perhaps extended to other um, places as uh, you know other type of community or so um i'm still on it i think it was a really great experience again tons of thanks to open Euler organizers and yehui and everyone else um yeah this is my thing are there are there next steps that are happening yeah. Um, so we were specifically this. Oh, Sean, you you were gonna say. No, you go ahead. Go ahead, Daniel. Okay. okay. So we had. Uh, okay. So we had discussions with a Professor Wayne. Uh, I have here the name right now. Um, he's now uh, in kind of the executive director of CEO of Open Euler, and then with Yehui and other and other folks. So there is there is this concept of ecosystem that they are using that includes you know businesses, individuals, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and one of the goals of Open Euler is, uh, as they were claiming during the summit, is to go global. Um, 
And now my hypothesis, because Yahoo, we, we, we need him to enter, is that they, by becoming global, this means to be part of other open source communities. And I assume that all the open source communities to be part of Open Euler. So the two, there are two, three, four steps that we were discussing that probably may make sense. One of them is opening the discussion to analyze uh, the health and sustainability of these complex systems, operating systems, or whatever we call it. Um, Open user specifically is, a, is an operating system. Um, I think in chaos, we might be in a good position to invite other uh, operating systems and have this discussion all together. So that's one of them. Uh, the other is that they were interested in still having this report that we were discussing we have in December on the health or sustainability of Open Euler from a chaos perspective based on, on this analysis first on, for complex systems or operating systems. Um, I'm using the both terms uh, quite similar. They are not the same, but uh, an operating system is a complex system, we can say. Um, and then there was this discussion uh, because uh, Shane Kirkland from Open Chain was there as well. Um, um, they they are kind of they seem to be kind of experts in producing international standards. Um, um, they have a lot of experience there, so it seems that having a and this is part of the discussion that we had in the past as well. Moving forward, this discussion about having a standard in chaos uh, sounds like something where everyone is aligned here. Yeah, there was a uh, strong interest in China. Yes, um, yes, in that for sure, hundred percent. And it would be good if Yahui was here for some of this, so I hope he's able to rejoin us. Yeah, he will bring more context, definitely. But uh, the discussion about going global, I assume is about uh, if we are able to adopt international standards, then this is where, where we are at. Um, the, yeah, the way um, the way one of the, a couple of the corporate people who we spoke with explained it was, it's hard to get people to take up and use things like metrics or recognize their validity for making business decisions without a standard. But once there's a standard, then it's easier to act on yes. the things that we learn from metrics in the Chinese business context. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly this. Um, yeah, and then and then the other discussion related to chaos that we had there was more about the software side of things. That, uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of related to metrics models, but uh, some, some ongoing conversations between Ogor and uh, Osis Compass and Grimoire Lab. And so, on. Uh, so I would say this might be the four main topics. On... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, the other thing maybe to mention is. With regard with Yahui Beck, with regards to the report, I think I think the intention in, um, for the open oil community was to have a report that we collaborated with them on. Um, I think Paturgia was has the potential to do a work agreement for that, and that that report would use chaos metrics. It's it's not something that comes from chaos directly, but it leverages the work that chaos has done mm. is what I understood the the conversation to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is there is indeed a parallel conversation I was having with with Don. Yeah. About, uh, uh, we need to I want to be as transparent as possible here. I mean from a commercial perspective, not from a chaos perspective, so something well we are all meeting in Boston as well. So yeah. Anyway. So Yehui, now that you are back can you say something? Maybe we hear Sorry. you now. Oh yeah, it works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe a bit, a bit low. I just re restart my laptop again. Okay. You know, it's you already have some problem. <laughs> no worries. So we were uh, so Matt asked the question of what what were the main points of connection with chaos, and then we we brought these four mm -hmm. that you can see here: analyze the health and sustainability of complex systems, operating systems, open Euler, report on the health and sustainability of open Euler producing chaos standards, and then we had several conversations. Our question is, yeah, yeah. do you have other thoughts or ideas or comments? No, no, no. I think uh, it's quite, it's, it's quite um, 
uh, cover all the things we discussed. Actually, uh, except for the uh, Open Ruler um, Summit, we also have a, a really good conversation. I mean, especially Daniel and Sean uh, talking with um, with the students and the professors from Peking Universities. Yes. Uh, and uh, we also have yeah. a Compass Summit together. Uh, uh, it's all happened in that week. So time is quite uh, strange, but um, we utilize all the time slot to working a lot with each of single person together. Yeah, it's very, very intense. Learned a lot. So are there like to do's from or for the chaos project? I know that the standard conversation is certainly one that's located directly in the chaos project. Um, the, like, is this a to-do for the chaos project? Like trying to identify other, or is it too early in that regard? Uh, I, I think, I think it's a conversation, uh, between, uh, between, uh, us and uh, I mean between chaos and open ruler, uh, it's all about uh, what can chaos can can get uh, uh, set up collaboration with uh, with open ruler. So of course yes, uh, uh, that's that's the thing we want to make that um, uh, we could help to set up uh, this operating system evaluation uh, system um, based on. Uh, based on the open ruler at the research study case, and uh, and also based on the matrix model we already built and we intend to build for the such a complex system, uh, we also produce a deep inside report uh, for the open ruler. That's the all the uh, I think agreement we made during okay. the summit. Okay, so is this. Is this report then probably the first? Is this a, a top priority? And the I, goal, I the goal is for the end of the the end of this year or sometime in the middle to third mm -hmm. quarter of this year, if I'm recalling correctly. Am I right about that, Yahui? Um, yeah, to, uh, to get I think them uh, interim work products sooner so that we can discuss them. Yeah, uh, exactly. So. Uh, the so final report uh, will be released uh, by the end of this year till the Open Ruler uh, Summit, just okay. like uh, the Open Ruler Summit we had in the last months for okay. 2023. And before this um, summit, uh, we we could uh, you know share our progress uh, during the year. Um, for example, at the first uh, you know uh, couple of months. We could share the evaluation system we already we already built for the operating system uh, to share with other other ones about our thoughts because this work is not 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 just done between uh, the people uh, from chaos and open ruler we could invite all the other uh, organizations people or members or other friends uh, to join with us to create this uh, evaluation system I mean basically uh, a group of metrics model to describe the whole complex uh, system. And then if we step by step to use our metrics model to you know, deploy it as a, as a tools framework based on the Augur or, or, or Grim Lab, and of course with the OSS Compass, uh, when sometimes we think the result based on the uh, metrics model is valuable, we can also, I mean, to share with those th information with uh, with other people on during the meeting or during the submit, some submit or you know talk to other people, and uh, and all the things we think we should do, we should make it publicly, not only during the uh, within the chaos, but also we share the, our progress with the open ruler community, because. Uh, uh, all the agreement we made it uh, it's not done by uh, you know Huawei or some organization with the, with the chaos. It's done by uh, you know create collaboration between the open ruler or community and chaos community.
Matt, going going to your question, what I would add here is uh so I wouldn't say if these are the priorities for chaos. Basically, we are deciding the participants here if this is a priority or we think that this might be a priority for for chaos as a community, and then this will go into the interest of the different people here and others, of course, um, around this. So um I I don't have an answer for that question. What I would say is that if after maybe the board meeting or after uh, uh, we all see each other in FOSTEM or so, we all think that this is a great opportunity to understand operating systems health and everything, then this is probably when we can say, okay, this is this is going to be the plan for part of the chaos community for, for 2024. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pers no, it... pers personally, this is aligned with a, some personal interest I have in with a, uh, 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 analyzing a delivery metrics and, and some other stuff in other lines. Um, so personally I have interest in in this that that's how I can bring to the well, I, I to think the, what chaos brings that, that open oiler is looking for is an outside independent yeah. set of measures regarding the health of their software <laughs> community. And so because we've developed metrics and metrics models and now some of the work that's Don that Don is doing <clears throat> to put together the insight guides, I, I think we have the raw material and Viturgia has the consulting experience and Open Euler is a fantastic use case because it's a Linux kernel distribution for you know assessing the health of the community and providing insight. Uh, about it. So it, it gives us a chance to kind of stretch our legs in all these areas that we're working toward this year with standards, uh, metrics models, insight guides. I think all of the things that are chaos priorities this year are well served by doing the example of the open oiler community sort of collectively. And, and if that's an iterative process, then I think we also achieve the aims that the, I can't remember Yahui, if he's the CEO or has a different title for Open Euler, but the the head honcho that we talked to for Open Euler spoke a lot about just wanting to have, you know, the kind of, as we go through this, if there are things we notice, let him know. And I think, I think that's another opportunity for us to kind of learn how and when to take the insights that we develop using these emerging standards, metrics models, insight guides, and work them through a community and then see the effects of that information and ultimately land on a report that's both useful to chaos and useful to open oiler. Just, just to add here, um, uh, if we are talking about chaos, I would leave side Peter, yeah. Just, then so, the so I, yeah, so it's a, it's a subtle thing I'm, I'm trying to execute narratively, which is as a chaos project, we need experience doing this kind of work in order to actually develop standards that are meaningful to ensure the utility of the metric models and the insight guides. Mm -hmm. And so there's a benefit to the community. I also believe that there is more work associated with with this report then the chaos community can execute that we don't have the bandwidth to do all of the work pertain you know that that feeds into the report so Biturgia has an opportunity i think to do some consulting work with open oiler that also you know that of course leverages the chaos assets and then the value of what you learn can be returned to iterate on the ways that we build our portfolio of standards and metrics models. Mm -hmm. um, but I I don't see the community being able to take this on without Paturgia taking on a, a consulting role um, on a contract basis because we, we won't have the bandwidth as a community to ensure that a good report comes together, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. there's, there's kind of two things happening in parallel and the good parts for chaos can happen anyway, but the report I think that Open Oiler desires 
will require the consulting level of engagement that the community can provide. Is that, I don't know if that clarifies what I said or if I just made it even more confusing, but I tried yeah, to clarify. It's, it's just to be, it's, it's just to be yeah. aware of the, that there is a conflict of interest. So just being transparent on everything, like, yeah, there is this interest, but then there is, there might be an opportunity to bring money or money flowing, but then it's like, okay, uh, it might, might be out of the conversation or so to decide whatever. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think um, I'm interested in what others have to say. My, my perspective is as a community, it's an opportunity to test our legs. Um, and so the, what could be perceived as a conflict of interest is simply a pragmatic choice to ensure that a good report is developed, which is a deliverable that's required. And in the process, I think as a community, we learn a great deal. But, but I'm interested in others' perspectives. Personally, this doesn't feel, it doesn't feel much like a conflict of interest to me, to be honest. I mean, there's, there's always, there's always money flowing when, when people are, are working on stuff within the chaos project, right? We have, we have grant funding, we have, you know, support from Baturgia who, uh, you know, are working on, on Grimoire Lab. We have, support from Huawei and other other companies who are working on on metrics models we have people from Google and Microsoft who are being paid to contribute um and so so to me this this doesn't feel all that dissimilar I think it's important because it's coming it's kind of coming from the chaos community that that you know we co-brand it in some way that it's like a you know chaos and Baturgia effort. Um, I'd be curious what, what Matt thinks. I also agree. I don't see it as a conflict of interest. You're being very nice, Daniel, but I don't, I don't see that. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I appreciate your concern. You can continue to express them, but I personally don't see this as a conflict of interest. Um, uh, what would be really helpful to me is something like a scope of work for doing this. I would What's not clear to me is what the commitment from the chaos project is and what needs to be done. Um, and so just having folks from Open Euler involved and having the company of Baturgia involved and having the chaos project involved, defining a scope of work for each would be extremely helpful for me. Yeah. And that actually is you know, who we asked for that by the end of 2023. I don't think we got to that. And I, I would need somebody like if it's the three of you or two of you or some other group to put together that scope of work and try yeah. to help manage. So that, yeah, the way because I don't, sure. I don't, I don't see if it's a large scale project, even if it's clearly defined, um, like just moving this to say. Elizabeth doesn't seem sensible to me, or just no. moving to Dawn doesn't seem sensible to me. No, I, I don't of, think. If there's a group of people who are interested in moving this forward, then as part of that scope of work, they could define areas where Dawn may or may not want to be involved or could yeah. connect. Um, but I, I wouldn't see this landing there. From, from my perspective, there's a scope of work that is required to produce the report that Open Oiler is looking for. However, that I also see that that scope of work is an opportunity to stretch our legs with regards to how we employ metric models and metrics and insight guides. So I see, I see this project that will be a Baturgia consulting arrangement at some level, also as an opportunity for us to get a real world experience using and implementing all of these goals that we have for this year. So standards, metrics, models, advancing the software stack within chaos, those, those three go side by side with this effort. And I don't see it as putting new work in front of any of the chaos working groups. I see it as What's the, I'm looking for the right business school word, um, copacetic with, uh, synergistic with, aligned with the goals that we have as a community. Mm -hmm. 
Don, you're unmuted. Do you have a comment? Sometimes. Uh, right. No, I was just leaving myself unmuted so that I could talk <laughs> if I need to. Because yeah. I'm putting lotion on my hands, so I know I can't. Yeah, talk to you. <laughs> so, if the scope of work is is that kind of the next step? Yeah. For for me, it would be really important. From yeah, a Daniel, perspective. yeah, I don't know if you've made any yeah. effort. I don't know if you've had any chance to look at the scope of work. We didn't really communicate much over the holidays about it. But I'm certainly happy to contribute since I have an understanding of what's involved. And I think that, you know, the role I can play in developing that is to just draw the connections to these chaos goals so that the alignment with chaos goals and the scope of work for your consulting agreement are clearly enumerated. And I, again, I don't think they're a conflict of interest. I actually think this kind of arrangement will help us to more effectively advance all of our chaos goals this year. And if we didn't have this example to stretch, stretch us, stretch ourselves with. I yeah. think the, the scope of work um, that we need is probably different than the scope of work that, um, that Baturgia would have. I as agree. The consulting agreement. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's, there's that piece. So certainly they need some sort yes. of agreement for, for the consulting, but I think the scope of work should be broader than that. And, you know, what is it that you need from the chaos community? How can we help? promote it? How can, you know, how can other people um, participate if needed? So I would say that the scope of work is probably just a little bit broader than the consulting agreement. Yes, I, I can agree with you. So what, what I would go for would be a an understanding of how the different pieces. So first, framing an understanding of the goals of chaos for 2024 or more or less the community discussions we've had, so they have an agreement there. Mm -hmm. Then when this is this is there, basically decide on what you said on okay, what is what is what uh, we think uh, the project needs to become a success at the end of the year in the time we we can do it. Um, basically, is uh, contacts uh, outreach. Uh, public discussions, uh, opening the call to other operating systems or so. It's about having that where chaos definitely can work or the different board members or people that are here can help with. Uh, but just to, to let you know about the specific statement of work with uh, that we have, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's in progress. It's mainly about accelerating all of this work. So it's about supporting from Viterja whatever is happening. So I don't know, comes to my mind usual metrics definitions thing, right? Sometimes every other week. So then we didn't have to produce, you know, to land everything or to make sense of the whole knowledge also. So then the, the role would be in this case to accelerate this and then basically from meeting to meeting, make things happen, formalize the stuff, talk to people when needed, this, this kind of things mainly. It's about accelerating the whole thing. Oh, this sounds good. Um, is it Sean and Daniel and Yahui that get together and try to specify the bounds of how the different groups are involved, and then particularly, I, I, like how, I, hold on, how, particularly how chaos would need to be involved? Because I think that's the main concern for me, or just the main question for me. Like to Don's point, like. Baturgia and Open Boiler can sort that out without any of my knowledge. I don't, that's that's between them. But ultimately, I, I guess part of this is, you know, we've worked with other organizations in the past and things have evolved from the beginning of that work to the end of that work. Um, and so just having a, a clear frame would be really helpful for me. Yeah, sure. Who, who would like to be involved? I mean, I'm happy to help here. Yeah, I think Daniel, you, Yahui, and I need to have a conversation because yeah. we spent a week together and, you know, sorted all this and we kind of know the nuances of it. And I think we should perhaps, perhaps at this meeting in two weeks, we should have some of what we're discussing right now um, disambiguated or made more clear, whichever yeah. angle you prefer mm -hmm. to take. I don't know if that fits your timeline, Daniel. I don't want to, because I know we've got uh, FOSDEM coming up, but 
We, we yeah, can even we... work and force them. At least you yeah, actually, uh, Bosdom conflicts with this meeting in two weeks, doesn't it? It does. Yes. Yeah. But we can we can meet there soon. At least you and me and yeah, yep. and, and share it asynchronously with Yahui. Yahui, a lot of us are going to be in Brussels in two weeks. Yes. Yeah. That's actually Daniel. Also, an opportunity for you and I to socialize these thoughts with the rest of the chaos community with mm -hmm. Don and Matt mm -hmm. and Elizabeth. Okay. Sounds good. Um, any other any other comments on this? I I expected this to take a little <coughs> I think a lot. There was a lot going on. And I know that you know, you missed it. They all said you were an amazing host. So you had you were rebooting your computer. Yeah. They, just, they all really said thank you. So yes, you we we were very grateful for yeah. your your care taking uh, of us yeah yeah uh, what i wanted to say is that um, uh, the whole progress we made here uh, not just uh, uh, with sean with uh, with daniel but also with uh, uh, with our chaos community members we also need to share our progress and collaborate with open ruler so you know open ruler also the community uh, maybe we need to have spent some time to to set up the uh, the final uh, working working scope Who's uh, you know responsible for by someone from Open Rula? Of course, I, I could put it. Uh, I could play it as a role as the interface between this those two communities. But uh, but still, uh, we need some work uh, collaborate with with Open Rula because mm -hmm. they may need to provide some you know uh, introductions about communities and also you know provide some uh, uh, you know data from Open Rula to tell us where to find those data publicly. Right. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, we perhaps as a last question. Sorry, sorry, Matt. No, it's uh, fine. Do, do you have a specific <clears throat> feedback from uh, chaos participation in in the summit? Something that you can share, perhaps, or so. I don't know some thoughts or was that useful for Open Euler? Was that uh, meaningful? Yeah. 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 Of course. I think when we do, uh, when we do confirm the working working scope, uh, between chaos and the open ruler, and we uh, formally, uh, trigger the collaborations between those two communities, and for the re rest of the progress we made at any time slot during the summit, uh, we are very appreciated to share it with everyone publicly. Awesome. Well, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for the update. I mean, personally, you know, I'm not trying to push back on asking for a scope of work. I think anytime we have an opportunity to, in the Chaos Project, to work with a community that wants to work with us and can provide uh, large-scale deployment of metrics and metrics models and thoughts about how they are impacting community health, we, we take that opportunity. So that's really cool. Um. This, I just, I wanted to put this here because this is the metric model meeting. We, uh, we're we about ready to start our chaos DEI project badging. And so the DEI.md file is a file that asks people how their project attends to four particular metrics around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, I think we're gonna be launching this in just a little over a week on the 26th of January, officially. Uh, this is fundamentally a metric model. So it's four metrics brought together to, to support organizations in their reflection on DEI. And we should probably publish this as a model. I think we had, don't we have a vent? Elizabeth, isn't that, didn't we turn that one into a model? We so did. We should probably just do the same here. You know, I don't think we have this, do we, as a metric model? I don't think we do. Um, my only question is, how do we want to approach um, metrics that we add in later? Because um, we, I think, have talked about maybe a total of ten by the end. Yep. So maybe, yep. That could be huge. So I don't know if you want to release it as like a bronze, and then a silver would be like bronze plus these two, blah blah blah. But yeah. then we also talked about having any of the group. So yeah, I'm not sure. I think we should at least just start this with the four that we have. It seems sensible to say this is the project badging metric model. 
and it'll just evolve over time. And maybe okay. it will be 10 metrics. And I think we could write it in such a way that, <laughs> yes, we understand this is a really big one, <laughs> but there's some, some context to understand as well, so. Okay. Good. So the action item is just, like, do you want me to start it or? Yeah, that'd be, if you could, that'd be great. Okay. Um. So this was this kind of does bring up one other point, and it was something that I had typed to Don kind of at one point, and it was an observation that we have. We have several metrics models um, as well. So let me just. Um, we have the event badging metric model, which has a lot of traction just because we have built the framework around it and we promote it. Um, project badging is probably going to get, it's probably going to be another very heavily deployed metric model just in the sense of we have taken the time in the chaos project to build structure around it and community around it. Um, I had pointed out to, to Don as well that the starter project health metric model is one that gets a lot of traction because we are spending a lot of time in the chaos project talking about it and promoting it. Um, so it's just, it's kind of an interesting observation to me that some of our, our, most widely recognized metric models, this is anecdotal, are the ones that we have taken the time to build structure around. Well, I think the, the structure around the project badging and the event badging is necessary because those metric models are not discernible from trace data. Um, so those, those kind of, they're metric models to be certain, but they're also programs that we have to operate. Right. I mean, but we could yeah. have we could have just said, here's a model right. for event organizers to think about and just put it out there. And we could have said the same for project badging. And my suspicion is, is that it wouldn't have been as heavily used if there wasn't a badge behind it, like a program oh. we deploy is what I'm saying. That no, we... I, yeah. Agreed. Yeah, I don't think people would be motivated to go through non trace data derived metric models like those if there Even wasn't if a badge it's trace data or not trace data just that we have taken the time to build a structure that supports people to walk through that model and i think dawn is doing the same with the starter project health metric model like she's taking the time to talk about it in for example the ospo context group and she's taking a time to write the insight guides against it right now. Like it's there's there's structure building around it. And my suspicion is is that whether it's trace data or not trace data, that the models that we choose in chaos to support in whatever way that might be are the ones that are going to get the most traction. But at least it seems to be the case so far. Yeah, and I think. I think the challenge with a lot of the the models and um this kind of plays on why I think these these have gotten so much traction is that um we don't so aside from compass we don't really have a good way to um to implement the models right the starter project health model is implemented because I wrote a bunch of python code that writes database queries to implement it this this is why I think the the group and the OSPO working group are looking at how they can what what they need to do to implement a model because it's it's not like I don't know it's not like it's just automatic it's not like they can just point something at a a repository and get the get the data back it's it's a little bit more it's a little bit more work than that and we've put the work behind the the three models that that Matt just mentioned, which is why I think that they've gotten gotten more traction. But I, yeah, I think I think that's been the challenge with some of the other models is there's just a lot of, there are a lot of metrics and nobody quite knows how to, how to pull all of that together into something that they can use. Yeah, I, I think the insight guides really help to bring people to the models um, to do that, to provide that support that, 
we historically haven't provided around metrics or metrics models because they haven't required that same level of support um, to I sort don't, of get the data. Yeah, I don't, the insight guides haven't really been deployed yet. No. It's I'm, been, yeah, I'm, I'm speaking conceptual, conceptually, <laughs> yes, of course. I mean, speculating it's, forward. It's that we have taken the time to build structure around those models, whether it's a social structure, like in the case of what you're doing on the starter project health metric model, you know what I mean? We are spending time um, and same with the med badging. Yeah, Elizabeth. I was just gonna comment also that those metric models also lend themselves to a community around them. Like they each kind of have their own community. Badging has a community around it. So if if we wanna drive adoption, that might be a piece that we put some effort in, like have the structure, have the promotion, but also take time to really build the community around folks who are using that. So if there's something any of the community managers in chaos can help with, then we could certainly include them in like how to engage people using this particular model, for instance. Mm -hmm. Like I bet there's a community around viability, like people who that's the thing that they care about, like Gary, you know, like where are those folks? Like how can we bring them in? How can we engage them? Things like that. Mm -hmm. And then in those cases, that's like, you know, Gary, you know, pretty much everyone in the OSPO group is seeking out the data from for the things that can be derived from trace data i think they want to see the data that's like every corner of those groups is coming to dawn or i or daniel for for data to enact those metric models and i think the insight guides give us a pathway to provide that kind of community support for you know how do you take these raw materials and then make sense of them in the context of your organization which we have to do for the things that you can't get from trace data and it seems like we should do, to Matt's point, for the things that we can get from Prince data. And I think too that we need to think about our our audience. And um, and the reason I say that is because historically, I think that the people who've gravitated towards chaos, including a lot of the people from the OSPOs, have been people who have been more focused on the the outbound contribution side of things. So measuring project health from the standpoint of the you know the community the project activity things things like that um and those tend to be kind of one one set of people within within ospos and then there's a whole nother set of people within ospos that are heavily focused on compliance which are the metrics models that gary has been working on mm -hmm. and the compliance folks aren't really the people who've typically shown up in the chaos project now there are a number of people who kind of do both, like anyone who leads an OSPO has to care about both of those things. But I think historically we've tended to be a lot more focused on, on the outbound contribution side and not as much on the consumption um, slash inbound side of things. Yeah, I, I, I agree. There have been exceptions, of course, but yeah. I oh, agree. yeah. Yeah. But I think we just tend to we just tend to think about metrics, and I think within OSPOs they tend to break their work into those two areas, at least the larger OSPOs. Um, you know, at, at VMware we had a whole separate team of people who worked on compliance that were separate from from my team and separate from the engineering team, because my team and the engineering team were all always focused on the outbound consumption or sorry the outbound contribution side of things. Yeah, and I know I know the work that the Remy and the U.S. government are doing right now is does have a pretty heavy compliance component to it. So I, did I get this right, Don? What kind of what you were saying, like outbound? Mm -hmm. I think starter project health kind of fits there. Yeah, and the viability stuff. Is Gary? Is that mm -hmm. around compliance? So, like maybe from a also from a chaos perspective, we think about you know what would be next here <laughs> and what could be next here. I, How I think community around compliance, I, these kind of things. Yeah, do we? Yeah, sorry. I, I think I think actually the whole thing is about. Uh, our open source community, we divided it into the two dimensions. First, 
like uh, outbound con contributions actually is uh, it's um it's close connected to the community sustainable or community uh, ecosystem sustainable mm -hmm. that's one thing the second thing is about the software artifact produced by these uh, communities it's related to the compliance security it's related to the code quality uh, if we stand if we uh, concentrate these two dimensions then we clearly know what kind of metrics model for these two uh, dimensions for example compliance uh, it's close related to the you know uh, to the software uh, that's this software contains the the uh, OSI license uh, each of single files uh, level uh, do they that, that do they clear declare the right license it's all about software artifact but um, uh, for the other things we concentrate to promote more people to join with the community to make the contribution to make the collaboration with each other that's the other dimensions that's from my understanding okay yeah the com the um what i would call consumption so compliance is a piece of that but it's it's really about um the things the different things you need to think about when you're thinking about consuming open source within a company so you're building your infrastructure around it you're putting it in your products um compliance is certainly a big big piece of that as well as viability, because viability is actually separate. Like I would say there's like the viability assessments and then there's compliance. And I see those as two, two different things. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I agree. Oops. Um, so one of my things for you to think about is we, at least in the chaos project, seem to be able to define these things and people will listen like community members and participants will this is the value component that i think we bring and so i think we have the ability to kind of define like what this next thought should be when it comes to outbound contribution like mature project health <laughs> you know like older older company health, whatever it might be. Like mm -hmm. we have the ability to set those things out. So like when we came up with event badging, like we had the ability to scope that and people like were participants in that conversation, but we had the ability to do that because I think that's the position we have in chaos. And same with project badging. <laughs> we had the ability to have those discussions here and we could define that and now it's being deployed and I think people will engage with it. Same with starter project health metric. You were able to define that mm -hmm. <laughs> and then kind of set the tone for the conversation. Yeah. And, and I so think I we can we can actually look at some of our existing metrics models because most of the metrics models fall into that outbound contribution okay. category. So there yeah. might be some that are, maybe there's one that's a logical next step. I yeah, and we, we pick that, right, exactly. Yeah. And we say, here we go. <laughs> Here's where we're gonna start building a conversation around this. Yep. All right, I know we're over time. I just do wanna say one last thing here. Um, ISO standards, I have been reaching out to the folks at the LF and I'm not hearing back right now. So I'm hoping in the, the um, board meeting that we have today, I can reach out to some folks from the LF and try to get some support. But I'm very interested in doing this, but I, I need there's things that I need to get this done. Like I can't do it by yeah. myself. I, I know I know in the coordination I was doing with getting the GitLab money uh, for Chaos Africa that things the 2024 is kind of being slow to boot at the LF. Well yes. so I I'm not worried about loss of interest. I I just think they're booting up slowly right now. This is just something I've brought up a few times and I just wanted to continue. Yeah bring it up. So, yep. Okay. I'll see you in a bit. All right. We're yeah, done. Thanks Next everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.